Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing very, very well. Uh, this is the Bachelor of Business session, the 10.30 a.m. session for the 2022 Open Day for ADFA. Uh, I do hope you're all doing very, very well. I do realise the parking situation may have been a bit interesting arriving today, but I'm glad that you're all here now. Uh, my name is Dr. Adrian Robert Basbows. I am a senior lecturer in the School of Business, and I'm also currently serving as the undergraduate coordinator. So all things related to the undergraduate space, I am quite familiar with, and those things which I'm not familiar with, I turn over to the person who knows absolutely everything, Kelly Elzing right there. So this presentation today, um, we have one hour set aside. Please do think about any questions you may have along the way. I can talk quite a bit underwater if I need to, but I would like to make sure you're getting the answers to the questions that you have. So please, if you do have any questions along the way, uh, you can either ask me straight away or you can wait to the end and we can have a chat then. Now for the start of our presentation, I would like to recognise that we are all on Nungamore land at the moment. I would like to uh, warmly welcome, either here in this room or watching through the live, live stream, uh, any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander persons. And I would like to offer my respect to Elders past, present and emerging. Now, today's presentation will cover on several items, um, a brief introduction of sorts to the UNSW Canberra situation, a brief introduction to what the School of Business is all about, but then, of course, we'll head to what is increasingly important with this presentation, our offerings, which I would say for many of you here today trying to understand what the School of Business and what the Bachelor of Business is all about, you want to see what the courses are available. Moving on to the next section, we're looking at entry requirements, which are relatively straightforward laid out, uh, given that most of our students, well actually I'd say all of our students within the School of Business, or at least the Bachelor of Business, are all Defence students. Uh, so I can provide details on the Defence requirements for arrival, as well as the UNSW Canberra requirements. I'll speak briefly to your time at UNSW Canberra, what life here is like. Uh, and then finish up with any sort of Q&A you may have. So, as I said before, any questions at all, uh, I'll answer them as best as I can. So, for the sake of slight interactivity, and I can't help myself at times when it comes to this, whenever I get in front of a, a lecture of any sort of way, I need some sort of interactivity. Uh, I'll reach out to any prospective students in the room. I'll ask this rhetorically uh, just for now. I don't need any responses at this exact moment. Um, why are you here today? Why are you considering UNSW Canberra? And importantly for me, as a senior lecturer and undergrad coordinator in the School of Business, why are you here to listen about the School of Business? So that's just rhetorical for now. Um, I'll provide details about the utility of a business degree in the context of defence as we move forward, but this is something to think about as we move along. Uh, why here, why are you considering this today? So UNSW Canberra, we are a very unique academic institution in Australia. We are the only uh, university institution aligned with the Australian Defence Force uh, at the undergraduate level delivering programs to defence TOs or trainee officers. Uh, we have our first, second and third year students and we also have our advanced students who have already served for several years and who are returning uh, to receive a bachelor degree. Now, I will note, as you may be aware looking around today, uh, when you're not, of course, seeing the excitement on the parade ground or the various tanks uh, on display around campus, uh, you will have noticed there are four schools, uh, Science, Engineering, Humanities and Social Sciences, and, of course, the School of Business. Now, given that there are four schools, we are all delivering programs into the Australian Defence Force, uh, but the School of Business is unique in having almost 100% undergrads who are all defence students. Uh, in engineering and other schools, you might also find civilian students, but School of Business is very unique in being almost 100% dedicated to defence students only. But that relationship with defence is important to think about and it's an important caveat to understand our relationship. And it also means, and I'll, I'll discuss this on several slides, it also means when we look at the School of Business, uh, the nature of the courses on offer, uh, the way we deliver our courses, the content, the lectures, tutorials, the readings, everything that goes together, 
is aligned to build attribute qualities and capabilities that will be useful for future defence leaders. This is everything that, that the School of Business works toward. Uh, for that reason, and I am racing a little bit ahead to a <laughs> coming slides, but I can't help myself while I'm uh, going right now. Uh, but everything that we do is aligned to that. Whereas a traditional business degree may be more focused on private sector activity, we have quite an eclectic school of business in terms of where our academic staff are coming from, in terms of their own personal research interests, and the kinds of courses we are delivering. So we do not just deliver courses that are useful for ensuring that a uh, financial spreadsheet works out for a private company. We look more broadly, uh, management, leadership, capabilities, organisational behaviour, uh, utilities and skills required for future defence leaders. Now, the reason I'm belabouring that point is the unique relationship that UNSW Canberra does have with defence. Now, in addition to that, unique relationship. UNSW itself, the University of New South Wales, is a leading university. It's not just the defence relationship on UNSW Canberra campus, but more broadly, we are a very well-renowned university. So UNSW Sydney and Canberra collectively are currently ranked 43rd in the international global rankings, uh, but more importantly, in terms of the Australian context, we are ranked fourth uh, in Australia. So a very, very well-regarded university, uh, very, very advanced degree structures on offer with very capable academic staff that contribute to this world-renowned ranking. I'm not going to sell that much harder than that at this moment, uh, but it is, point, it is worth pointing out um, the staff that we have uh, and the abilities we're able to provide to students. And one unique aspect of this campus, and this is something that I didn't experience when I was an undergrad, um, Ignoring my youthful appearance, it, it is about 15 or so years since I was an undergrad myself, uh, but when I was an undergrad, there were very large classes, very, very large courses. Uh, in contrast, UNSW Canberra is a smaller niche specialised campus. Right? Given our unique relationship with the Australian Defence Force, that means UNSW Canberra provides the best student-to-teacher ratio uh, you'd be able to find in this country, which is very, very important in developing uh, an exceptional student learning experience and being able to tailor an educational experience for our TOs or for our trainee officers. Uh, so for in context, I deliver in the School of Business two third-year courses. Uh, caps out at about 80 students for each course at their highest level. Now in tutorials, that means there might be 10 or 12 students, uh, which means there's a lot of time to get to know students quite well to tailor the experience to what they need, to get to know students so that they can get the best possible education as a result, rather than being one amongst 30 or one amongst 40 in a workshop or seminar room. And this creates a very, very unique education experience. And as someone, as myself, who is a complete civilian in all things, I, I've tried to understand defence as much as possible, but I am very much a civilian. Uh, this unique relationship has enabled me to learn a lot about defence so that I can tailor at least the courses that I deliver, uh, that I can speak to, that are useful for future defence leaders. But that's UNSW Canberra broadly. I'd like now, with great enthusiasm, uh, to talk more about the School of Business. And I've got several slides that I will get to, but I'll, I'll, just, I'll just talk off the top of my head for a moment. Uh, now, I mentioned before that the School of Business is not a typical or a traditional uh, school of Business. Uh, the word eclectic comes to mind when we look at our staff, when we look at the courses we have on offer. So for instance, uh, I am a senior lecturer in a School of Business, but the research that I do, I look at international public sector management. So management makes sense in the context of a School of Business, but I look at large international public sector organisations, something which traditionally would not see that much within a normal, quote-unquote, business school. And our entire academic staff similarly come from diverse backgrounds, enabling a very eclectic education experience for our students, which is led by the research that we do, but done in such a way that it is tailored so that the capabilities and attributes developed 
suit purpose for future defence leaders. That's everything we do and everything we think about. And for me, this isn't just words that I've <laughs> memorised in advance of a presentation. This is something that I think about when I'm drafting my courses, when I think about learning outcomes, the way an entire course will be structured, uh, the assessment schedule, what's the purpose of what we're doing on a week-by-week -week basis. I always think about what is the utility for future defence leaders. Um, let's say we have quite a few students who are part of the School of Business who may go on to become bloggies, focused on logistics and supply chain management. I think about, for the sake of my courses, how can I tailor experience so that at least in part, even if it isn't a logistics or supply chain management course, how can I relate this to the future experience Defence Force personnel may need? So this is something we very much think about in this school. But it is something that I do think about as well, uh, coming myself from a non-business background into a business school. It does seem strange that why do we have a school of business for the Australian Defence Force? Now, engineering makes sense. Things need to be built, for instance. But a big thing to think about, uh, and I was looking at numbers yesterday uh, in preparation for today, there are tens of thousands of people who are employed by defence, either on a full-time permanent basis or as reservists. It is an incredibly large, complicated, complex organisation divided into the three services of Army, Navy and Air Force. There is a lot going on there. In addition to those respective services, you have your rank structures, under which you have varying levels of responsibility and authority. This is why, in my mind, business is so important. If we understand business as organisational behaviour, as leadership, as management, capabilities, human resource management, thinking about how organisations fit together, and particularly since our advertios, when they finish their undergraduate degrees, they are the new future leaders of the Defence Force. They will immediately be responsible for people, for time, for materiel. They need to have the skills necessary to provide oversight to those responsibilities that have been granted to them. And a school of business provides an opportunity to think critically about the theory and practice related to managing large, complex, complicated organisations. And you can see on the screen behind me that the amount of money, the budgetary requirements that go into defence are very, very large. And looking to the future, defence is thinking about what will be the requirements for an effective Australian Defence Force over the next 10, 15, 25, 30 years. What does the future of the ADF look like? How can we make sure those who will be in positions of responsibility have the necessary training and expertise to be those future leaders in, once again, a very, very large, complicated, complex organisation? That is why a school of business is so important in terms of skills required. Now, the mission of our school, and forgive me from reading from the screen, I do prefer talking, but forgive me for reading just for a moment. I like to get the words right for this one. Uh, so the mission of our school, to create and disseminate applied business knowledge for the benefits of students, organisations and society. And the idea of applied is very important, the idea of application. Uh, in our various courses, first, second and third year, uh, especially if any student comes back to undertake honours, or perhaps in the future, uh, beyond my purview, in the postgraduate field, you'll find that what we teach is not just about how can we think about accounting or economics, uh, not just about logistics, not just about human resource management, not just, not just about theory and concepts, but how can we actually apply this knowledge so that it can actually be used. So to create and disseminate applied business knowledge. So SBUS, the School of Business, enables the development of research and practice informed leadership capabilities for the defence and public sectors, business academia, the non-profit sector with the capacity to succeed globally. And thinking about the fact that UNSW Canberra is a civilian organisation in alignment with a Defence Force organisation, the relationships between different organisations in different fields becomes very important. And this is something that we strive to develop ourselves within academic space, but also to contribute to our students in the capabilities and capacities that they hold. So that being our mission, our vision is to be recognised globally as a leading research intensive business school, 
renowned for its students and staff, teaching quality, relevance, and innovation. And not to belabor the point about the uniqueness of our teaching experience, but the idea of innovation is very important to us. Uh, the idea of relevance is very important to us. Um, and I really do need to stress that defence relationship in understanding that we are not just teaching courses. We're not just saying, this is how you do accounting. We're not just saying, this is how we understand organisational behaviour. We contextualise. We create relevance to what we're talking about to make sense of these are the skills, capabilities and attributes that will be useful down the line. Uh, so for my own part, in the courses that I run, I am lucky enough to work with uh, either former or current defence personnel who are able to contextualise what is being taught in such a way that I'm unable to as a non-defence person, but they are able to give an experience of 10, 15 or 20 years in defence. So we're able to contextualise, make relevant and innovate our teaching as a result. The school's purpose is to create and disseminate applied business knowledge for a range of audiences. Thus, to be successful, the school needs to be research intensive, relevant to its context, innovative in both research and teaching, and creative in how it shares and exchanges new knowledge. And we do emphasise the importance of integrating the research the academic staff do with the teaching op uh, opportunities that we provide, or the learning and teaching opportunities we provide to our students. It is one thing to talk about what a textbook has to say, but it's also important to look at our own research as academics and say, this is the broader world, let us contextualise it for you. Let's innovate to think about these complex concepts that we are talking about. So a Bachelor of Business degree, and I will note for a moment, I'll take a step back, not only do we have our Bachelor of Business, we also have our Bachelor of Business Chief of Defence Force program. Uh, we also have uh, within the arts or humanities and social science school. We also have the business major that we deliver and we also provide business electives into non-business schools. But for the sake of this one slide, the Bachelor of Business degree from UNSW Canberra prepares students for their ADF career by developing key business management skills. And I've belaboured that point already, but it is worth reiterating once again. This is something that we specialise and focus in. We are aware of who our students are. Uh, we do not have an eclectic civilian population within the School of Business. We know our students are all TOs, first, second, third years or advanced students. So we make sure we understand, we think about what we are teaching, how it makes sense for that ADF context. So the Bachelor of Business degree uses the world-class academic expertise of UNSW researchers to develop sophisticated knowledge of strategy, leadership and other managerial concepts. And so, for instance, if you were able to join our School of Business, participate in the Bachelor of Business degree, uh, you will see me in third year, in the final year for all students. Uh, my first course in third year is a business strategy implementation course, which focuses on how strategy is formulated in varying organisational contexts and how it is actually practically implemented in those contexts. And then, very exciting, I'm happy to say this, uh, one of the most amazing things I'm involved in now for my teaching, uh, the very last semester, the end of third year, I have developed a work integrated learning program where students working with School of Business mentors and defence mentors will work collaboratively on a live defence project, conducting research related to that project and providing recommendations back to senior defence personnel. That is where the degree ends up. But the idea of making this practical, thinking about strategy, leadership, management, this is very much what we do. And hopefully, by my enthusiasm, you can see that this is what we drive towards. This is what we're always thinking about within our school. So the diverse range of electives that are on offer, and in a few slides, I'll give you a full breakdown of the Bachelor of Business degree. But the diverse range of electives, as well as core courses that we offer, enable the opportunity to gain knowledge in a very, very diverse and eclectic range of courses. Now, of course, we do have our traditional economics, finance and accounting courses. We have our traditional logistics, supply chain management courses. But we also have very, very innovative courses which look at illicit business, that look at management and governance in developing countries. We try to have a diverse and eclectic mix of courses to not just develop 
rote skills that are required of any business degree, but also to broaden horizons to innovate for the sake of our ad for TOs. Now, going back to an earlier point that I made, we do have an exceptional uh, teacher to student ratio. And as you can see, we are actually quite a small school overall. Uh, and it's, I, I don't want to, oh. Perhaps I need to walk around for a moment. Eventually the lights will come back on or someone will resolve it for me. <laughs> this is the joy of delegation. I'm sure it'll take care of itself at a certain point. So I'll keep going in the interim, everyone. So we are a small specialised niche school. Uh, we have only 185 undergraduate students, which in context, uh, if anyone popped by um, to an open day, say at ANU, uh, they have tens of thousands of students. In our school, thank you very much. <laughs> Check the lights. Uh, we have only 185 students at the undergraduate level, and we have 481 postgraduate students. Uh, and almost all of our postgraduate students are defence personnel once again, uh, but coming back after finishing undergraduate degrees, or coming back several years after the fact to pursue, let's say, uh, a master's opportunity. In addition to that, we have 47 uh, HDR, or high degree research, candidates. 36 academic staff, uh, 35 plus yours truly, and seven professional staff members. We are a small school. We're actually the smallest school in UNSW Canberra. But our, uh, the size of our, our school is also our strength. It gives us an opportunity to be innovative. It gives us an opportunity to specialise in what we deliver to our students, recognising that there are a few of us and there are a few of them. But this is what we aim and gear towards. So with that in mind, this next section is the important one. And if you haven't had the chance to pop by the School of Business stall, which is in the Adams Auditorium, or sorry, just outside the Adams Auditorium, I should say, uh, you'll be able to pick up uh, a few guides which provide information into the Bachelor of Business, uh, the Bachelor of Business CDF program, as well as the Arts Business Major. So if you haven't had a chance to find those documents, uh, please do head across to the auditorium and you'll be able to find them there. But this section will break everything down. Now, the Bachelor of Business is, I don't want to use a cliche, but it is our bread and butter. It is, it is the mainstay of our program. Uh, almost all our students are part of this. We do have a select few who are part of the Bachelor of Business Chief of Defence Force program. Uh, and then we also have our Bachelor of Arts Business major. Now, obviously, the Bachelor of Arts is run through the School of Humanities and Social Sciences, or HASS but we deliver the business major into that arts program. So just in case you think to yourself that maybe a whole business program is not for me, you can consider instead arts and then specialise within arts in the business major. But never worry, as long as you're with our school, you are still one of us overall. Doesn't matter what, what school you come from. Uh, and then finally, of course, with all the electives we have on offer, uh, we also provide electives into other degrees. So we have students from science, we have students from engineering who will pick up the odd business elective along the way uh, through their free elective options. So I'll start with the next couple of slides talking about the Bachelor of Business and then the Bachelor of Business CDF or Chief of Defence Force program. Uh, and then I'll give you those very, very important graphics which break down year by year, semester by semester, the offerings we have. So the Bachelor of Business program, the aims, and forgive me once again for reading, I like to get this right, uh, enhance business acumen among future leaders and managers in the ADF, the Australian Defence Organisation. And that is very, very simply what we do. We are innovative, we are adaptable, we are contextualising to focus on the real world, but we develop and enhance business acumen. We laid solid foundations in communication, numeracy and general problem solving capabilities, and Let's say I give you an example. A normal course in the Bachelor of Business will have an opportunity to write, uh, opportunity to present verbally, but in such a way that you are contextualising what is learnt so that you are solving problems. Being able to identify and analyse an opportunity, a challenge, whatever it may be, and then propose recommendations to resolve them. That's a standard approach we often take in our courses. And we do focus on core business capabilities, noting the diversity of knowledge and skills which contribute to the study of business and the value of exposure to thinking outside purely business related areas. So as I said before, we are not a traditional business school. We are quite eclectic, but at the same time very specialised 
with our Defence Force personnel. Now, for those who are currently academically gifted, or for those who during their first year in the Bachelor of Business demonstrate themselves to be academically gifted, there is the opportunity for the Chief of Defence Force program. Now, each year we only have a handful of individuals who participate in this program, uh, but I would say for myself, as someone who is currently supervising CDF students, it is a lot of fun. This, I'm, I'm going to sell this one just for a moment. But the CDF program provides an opportunity in second and third year for academically gifted students to collaborate with a School of Business mentor in the pursuit of an advanced research project. Uh, so for context, we have a few CDF students right now who are collaborating with myself and another School of Business academic. Uh, they were part of a, a School of Business sponsored research project into the Defence Force. These students contributed to this project, uh, contributed to the report that was submitted to Defence as a result, and are now building upon further research that they direct themselves. So the best way to think about CDF, it is like a mini honours program. That's the way that I would regard it. Giving students an opportunity over a second and third year period to pursue their own individual research interests. Now later on in this presentation, and I have absolutely no watch in front of me, so I have no idea what the time is, so hopefully I'm keeping to it at a certain point. Uh, later on in this presentation, um, I'll be able to provide details about the entry requirements for the CDF program if you are an academically gifted uh, student right now. But I'll also note there is also the opportunity to transfer into the program if you demonstrate a high level of academic success during your first year. So here is the all-important Bachelor of Business program. Um, and unfortunately for myself and poor Kelly right here, who I work with, uh, we have just updated the program, so I have to keep forgetting the old program and remember the new one to make sure I say the correct thing to everyone. But this is the breakdown for the 2023 Commencing Students Bachelor of Business. You will undertake 144 units of credit over 24 courses over the three years. I'm glad I remember that correct number. 24 courses over three years. You begin your first year, uh, in first semester, second semester, with six core courses, three core courses each semester, and then the opportunity, or I should say the opportunity, or the requirement, to do a non-business elective each semester as well. Now I can see around the room there are photos being taken. We have A4 printouts of this at the School of Business uh, area uh, in the Adams Auditorium, so we can pass those around just in case, in case you want to have one uh, physically in your hands. But we begin our Bachelor of Business program with what to regard the necessary skills to understand business. Uh, introduction to accounting, uh, the uh, foundations of management, what management actually is, what it consists of, and fundamentals of data analysis in semester one. This is followed in semester two with OB, or organisational behaviour, business economics and business law, with the idea being that the six core courses over first year will set the groundwork for any understanding required as you pursue the rest of your degree. Uh, the remaining core courses on offer throughout second and third year, plus also the large number of uh, business electives that you can see there in orange. But that's your first year. You are quite uh, deeply focused in the business core courses, but of course you can take up and I, I really should avoid saying can, you are required to take up a non-business elective at the same time, which means you'll grab one or two courses from, let's say, uh, humanities and social sciences, uh, from science or from engineering, uh, just to expand your horizons during your first year. And I will say for our students, there is a lot of overlap in the elective courses uh, taken from humanities and social sciences. Uh, not only do our two buildings border each other, but we do exchange a lot of students in between for various courses. Now in second and third year, that's when specialisation happens. Uh, we don't have majors in the Bachelor of Business program, just the courses you see on offer, but we do have, or we will be rolling out, the idea of voluntary streams. This is the general idea that we have courses that fall into uh, an economics and finance basket, we have courses that fall into a decision-making basket. We have courses that look at managing people, managing organisations. We have logistics and supply chain management, core and elective courses. So we don't have majors, 
Uh, we can give a bit of guidance about what courses may be relevant or might be the most interest to you. But you basically choose from the pool that you see here in second and third year. So you have your core courses, project management, data analytics and visualization, leadership, introductory business ethics, that's all in your second year. And in addition, you also choose one business elective each semester. Uh, this is where our eclecticism comes into play. Quite a few of our electives are very, very diverse and I would say quite unusual in a traditional business school, but they are tailored for purpose to suit our ADF cohort. Then in third year, you will enjoy the two greatest core courses in business strategy implementation, business capstone. No reason I'll say that other than I have to live them. Uh, but also you will do logistics management and human resource management. In addition to those, you'll also choose one business elective each semester as well. Now throughout second and third year, you'll also be involved in the blue general electives throughout second and third year. These general electives are taken up not just by School of Business students, but by students from all schools. And in third year, you will have an and or situation of taking up the opportunity of another free elective. But we do not have majors. We do not lock you into a particular trajectory or a particular path. Students get to choose the business electives they want to do, with the only caveat being that we are a small school. So if one of our staff members goes on leave, one of our electives may go out of rotation for a six month period. That's, that's the only caveat to what we have on offer. Some courses are on a rotational basis. Now I will pause for just a moment. Um, everyone might be okay just now, but does anyone have any specific questions they would like to ask about this degree structure before I move on? Please. Yes, um, I will not be able to speak to the defence requirements for doing that. I, I can only speak to the USW camera side. But we do have what we call advanced students who have already served for several years. Um, had a couple of advanced students last year who were in their mid-30s, had served for a decade, and were coming back to, uh, to USW Canberra at ADFA to undertake uh, university education. Uh, we do see that, I wouldn't say we see that all the time because the majority of our students are uh, TOs just out of high school. Uh, but we do have quite a few advanced students come through who take up the ad for opportunity. Yeah. yeah thank you. Perfect. Sorry, right at the back there. Yes. The general course student program. Yes. Is that something that you primarily have to get selected for just out of general aptitude and like ability to study? Or is that something that you specifically have to apply for? Yep, excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, the question, and I do apologise for the live streaming, I completely forgot to repeat the last question, so I do apologise as well. So, so not repeating your question before. Uh, I'll repeat this question. Uh, the CDF program, in terms of joining it, is it by invitation or is it by application? Uh, to enter into the CDF program as a first year, it is by invitation. Uh, so as part of the CDF program, uh, as, well, sorry, as part of the application process, entering into ADFA, uh, your uh, high school grades will be reviewed. And if you meet the threshold, you will be invited to participate if you wish. The alternative to that, uh, if, you did, if you were not invited in first year, but throughout your first year, you demonstrated high academic aptitude, you have the opportunity with school permission to enter into the program. Uh, I have details about that on a few slides. The exact numbers, I just can't remember off the top of my head, that's why I'm gonna say they're in a few slides. But in a few slides, we'll be able to talk to that. Uh, usually, if they're not already in the CDF program when they first enter first year, they will enter it into the second year. I mean, possibly they'll enter it into their second semester of first year, but my experience so far has been that students have joined in their second year or first semester, second year. That, that, that tends to be the approach we take. Uh, largely because in order to enter the CDF program, you need to demonstrate an average across your courses of a certain threshold, escape my mind entirely for a moment, uh, but you have to maintain a certain average over all your courses over first year to be invited in by the school. But of course, in the lead up to that, you could always speak to representative of the School of Business and say, I'm interested, my grades are meeting the threshold, what can we do to enable me to join the program? That's something we can also talk about. Perfect. So. 
On that note, we have here the CDF program. It is very similar in structure over the three years to what takes place during the standard Bachelor of Business. The only difference, during second and third year, instead of having uh, a business elective being pursued each semester, you will be involved in the bottom of the greens there, a slightly darker green, uh, business research project. Now, this is a very, very vague, encompassing title, largely because it all depends on the student, all depends upon the School of Business mentor that the student pairs up with. Um, we have a number of CDF students currently within the School of Business, and none of what they do in any way is similar. So I couldn't speak to what uh, collectively everyone will be doing, but broadly speaking, it is an ongoing two-year research project typically aligned to defence interests, either conducting research into defence or conducting research that would be of you know, utility, of, of use to defence overall. Uh, this also might provide an interesting opportunity uh, to undertake advanced research opportunities, even interviewing uh, defence personnel. It's a very, very useful way of uh, raising your exposure within defence, but also greatly understanding defence through the development of advanced business skills and attributes. So the only real difference here is the fact that you will not be doing business electives, instead you'll be doing the CDF program in lieu of those business electives in second and third year. Now the next slide along, we have the business major. Now this is part of the Bachelor of Arts. Now I noted before the Bachelor of Arts is part of the School of Humanities and Social Sciences, or HASS. Uh, you'll be able to find the HASS desk uh, right next door to the School of Business desk, the Adams Auditorium. But we do have quite a few uh, business major students coming across from uh, humanities and social sciences. Now the breakdown of that structure, uh, in year one you have core courses, fun, uh, foundations and management, organisational behaviour and business economics. In addition to those in second and third year, you will choose six business electives, at least three of which need to be upper level business electives. So in a way, it is quite similar to the Bachelor of Business, but there is greater freedom uh, to pursue different opportunities while also focusing on arts courses. Whereas if I return to the standard Bachelor of Business, only the yellow opportunities are those where you could potentially do arts courses. Whereas in contrast, going back to the business major, there'll be a great many more opportunities to do arts courses, if that's something that you are, of course, interested in. But, and I won't belabor this point anymore, just because you're part of humanities and social sciences, if you're a business major, you are part of business. That's the way that I tend to view the world. So with that in mind, breaking all that down into simple terms, uh, three years, and I will stress the three years part. The three years is really beyond the control of UNSW Canberra. This is an ADF uh, requirement. At the end of your three years, potentially you might have the opportunity to do honours and continue on, but in the three years in the School of Business, you will be deployed somewhere else. So we very much stick to that three year window and three years only. Uh, it is very, very rare. I, I actually haven't seen a part-time student uh, while I've been here since I joined in 2017. Um, all full-time students within the Bachelor of Business program. So overall, you'll do 144 units of credit, uh, totaling 24 courses as part of the Bachelor of Business. And second, first and third year, I do realise I put those numbers out of order, first, second and third year, uh, breakdown of core courses in, some, in, uh, in first year, and then core and business elective courses in second and third year. But of course, the main thing unifying all of this is that the courses that we do deliver, regardless of their eclecticism, regardless of their diversity, they're all geared towards skills and attributes that suit purpose for defence. This is what we do. So importantly, entry requirements. So to join the Bachelor of Business program, minimum rank of ATAR 80, that is to join our program. Uh, arts, on the other hand, uh, the, uh, the uh, enrolment rank is 75. Uh, for the CDF program, if you wish to join, sorry, I, I can see in the dark the person I was speaking to before, uh, to join in first year, to, to receive that invitation without applying uh, a 95 ATAR to join the CDF program. 
So I would say for most in the room that I'm seeing around at the moment, coming across from your high school experience, uh, you'll be looking towards that uh, 80 or above to join this School of Business, or at least the Bachelor of Business uh, program. And I would say, and this is definitely going to be on a later slide somewhere, uh, but for the sake of thinking about this, um, I would say you it would be a good idea to be in about year 10, year 11 to start seriously thinking about this if this is the trajectory you wish to pursue, given that the dual enrolment process, which requires not only enrolment through UNSW Canberra, but also enrolment through ADFA itself, uh, can take 12 months uh, to do so. Uh, think well ahead of advance to make sure you're planned in preparation to join the university and ADFA as well. So food for thought, but it's always good to start thinking about this year 10, year 11 or so, uh, unless, of course, you wish to join Defence and come back later on. I, I remembered, of course. If you wish to join later on, uh, that would be a relatively more straightforward process compared to the steps required to come right across from high school. So your time at UNSW Canberra. If I was going to condense this into a word, it would be busy. Uh, in addition to the courses, and there are four courses per semester with the expectation of about eight to ten hours of work each week for each of those courses, you'll be also greatly involved in a lot of ADF ADVA activity. So there are a variety of student life opportunities on campus. Uh, some simple ones that the School of Business offers. Uh, we provide, say, uh, business, uh, <laughs> School of Business uh, pizza days. Uh, I was very, very happy we put together the School of Business brunch opportunity. A lot of the things that I like to focus on revolve around food for some reason. But we do provide opportunities for our students. But in addition to that, uh, the ad for requirements and the ad for activities will keep you very busy. Uh, ad for courses not related to UNSW Canberra that you'll be part of. Um, uh, extracurricular activities, sporting events are uh, greatly encouraged on the ADFA side. And just recently, last week or the week before, we had the ADFA musical, uh, which is another great extracurricular activity that was also involved. Um, it is a busy, busy, busy time. Uh, students always comment about how fully packed their calendars and weeks are, but I've never heard a student say that it's boring. Students have always enjoyed the thrill of the amount of activity involved uh, and the excitement of the numerous activities. Uh, that are available on campus, not just, of course, uh, the brunch that we'll, we'll talk about later on. We're, we're trying to organise the next brunch or lunch activity. So importantly, factoring in that I think we're running out of time and I want to provide opportunities for Q&A right at the end, uh, how to actually apply, and this is the big one. So this is a two-step process, uh, first through Defence Force recruiting and then through UNSW Canberra application process. Uh, I'm not fully versed in all the application procedures. I am but a humble academic. But I can speak to broadly some of these requirements. So for the DFR side of things, uh, complete the Defence Force recruiting process to be selected to join ADF as a trainee officer. Uh, as selection for the ADF is competitive and it can take up to 12 months, as I noted before, it is preferable that you apply year 11, just to make sure you give yourself enough time to get through all the paperwork, all the requirements to do so. Now, further information can be found on the Defence Jobs website. Unfortunately, I don't have the URL memorised, uh, but if you Google it, you'll be able to find it, and there's a um, variety of information from uh, Defence you'll be able to find for these details. Uh, in addition to that, the following step is to apply through UNSW Canberra. Uh, so lodge an application, uh, which open early August and close the end of September of the year before the commencement of study. Now this is something important to think about, given that an ATAR of 80 is required for the Bachelor of Business program, we need to understand where those uh, HSC results are going to be or where the ATAR results are going to be. But this is an ongoing process once again. But I would say the UNSW camera side is relatively more straightforward. It's the defence side which does take longer to make sure you're successfully uh, enrolled. Now, going back to the CDF program, sorry, since only one person does a CDF, I do have to draw my attention to you every single time. I do apologise. Uh, but uh, it is a very, very rewarding program. It is by imitation only, as I said before, in preparation for first year with an ATAR of 95 or above. However, and this is often the approach that we see students entering into the CDF program, at the discretion of the head of school, 
uh, and consultation, uh, Deputy Head of School Undergraduate Coordinator and potential supervisors uh, for a prospective CDF student. If you are able to maintain a WAM or a, an average between your courses of 80%, there is the opportunity to join in second year. So that, that's an important caveat. And we often see students that may not have received 95 ATAR uh, are still with us during first year, but demonstrate academic excellence, uh, demonstrate a great interest in joining this program because we ourselves in the School of Business, we recognise students who are at that higher distinction level. Uh, we do reach out to students and say, have you considered the CDF program? You would be an ideal candidate. So food for thought, you are able to join after the fact, not just in first year. Uh, importantly though, once you're part of the CDF program, you have to maintain a standard while in that program, which is once again, the uh, 80 WAM average. So not only do you need to be academic excellence to enter the program, you have to maintain academic excellence throughout. So if you do wish to contact us, uh, and of course the group unicorn mascot that is the School of Business, uh, we do have our business email address. Uh, you can also reach out to the, uh, into SAS, uh, Student Administrative Services. Uh, I, I do note, for the sake of defence, there is SAS and then there is the SAS. You are uh, contacting SAS in this particular regard. Uh, but contact the School of Business, contact SAS if you have any follow-up questions. And you can also see more about the School of Business through our School of Business website, uh, the UNSW Ad for Portal. So if you have any thoughts, want to see a little bit more, read a little bit more, please do see what we have on available and then reach out to us if you have any questions. So with that in mind, I am here right now ready to answer any and all questions that you may have. Uh, there are a few TOs with me right now. To, uh, I don't actually know, are all four going to be contributing to the Q&A or? No one actually told me who was, being, who was contributing. Uh, we have potential TOs here uh, to answer any specific questions. I can't talk about the student experience. It's better to have students talk about it themselves. Now, uh, an option with this, if you don't want to ask any specific questions in front of everyone right now, we can, at the end, have a small conversation if you want to talk one-on-one. -on -one. Entirely up to you, just give me the opportunity. But if you do have any specific questions, I'm here, our TOs are here, please do ask. Question right there. Um, so the degree 24 subjects, 134 units, if there are other subjects, if there are one of subjects you actually want to do, can you overlap? Um, you can, but we often encourage students not to. Uh, just given the amount of defence force activities going on at the same time, five courses, it can leave students stretched. Uh, even, even an incredibly well-achieving academically uh, student, um, doing five courses a semester can be a very large burden with also the Defence Force activities that are being done as well. Uh, so the question was repeat. So the, the question was asked. Sorry, I've, I've just been uh, confirmed that I need to repeat every question. I just get excited and respond straight away. And the question was, uh, what does a CDF provide more than anything when you actually complete the program? Um, there is a certification that comes at the end, demonstrating that you successfully completed this. Uh, the recognition that it is a higher level undertaking. Um, uh, befitting academic excellence, which plays well into future career, depending upon the career trajectory. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the skills development that involved in the program um, gives students exposure to opportunities they would not have before. A uh, great deal more understanding potentially of uh, Australian Defence Force itself, but also business acumen, business skills that they wouldn't otherwise do, given the nature of a highly specialised, far more rigorous undertaking. So there's the recognition uh, through certification, but then there's also the skills development and exposure to the organisation. Uh, there isn't, uh, so the question was, is there a career pathway? Uh, there is not a specific career pathway afterwards. Uh, but it does demonstrate a prospective student to be of a, a high academic calibre, which may be very, very useful for later promotion purposes or uh, career trajectories, but unofficially not part of a specific trajectory. Perfect. Another question, yes. Uh, 
Um, going back to a slide before, because I may have slightly skipped over that one. Here we are. So the assumed knowledge, the only assumed knowledge is part of the program. Sorry, I already forgot to repeat the question. Uh, in it, the question was, and I do apologise, I like I said, I get excited. Uh, in addition to the ATAR, are there any other requirements uh, in order to enter into the program? Uh, the easy answer is no. Um, besides the assumed knowledge of English, and besides the minimum ATAR of 80, no required background. You do, there, there is no expectation that you've studied any business or commerce or accounting courses at high school in any sort of way, uh, particularly since our first year courses are designed as introduction to accounting, introduction to business law, introduction to management. They are designed to get every student up to speed regardless of background. It's possible that for a week and a half, a student who did business at high school might have an advantage, but after that week and a half, it's a level playing field. Perfect. I just have one last question about the Chief Defence Force program. So you were saying that the entry requirements for somebody who's going through the application process before starting first year year 95 and above. Would you say that somebody who got, say, a 95 or slightly over a 95 would find that a little bit more challenging than somebody who got like a 97 or 98 to the point where they could see Um, um, so the question was, uh, in terms of the CDF, uh, the relative difference between, say, a 95 ATAR to a 98 ATAR. Um, bare minimum, like a bare minimum, minimum. yes. Uh, will that impact the performance of a potential student? Yeah. Um, my easy answer to that is no. Um, largely because there is a great difference between uh, the study I'm taking in high school, the study I'm taking at university. And my experience, and once again, ignore the youthfulness of my appearance. Uh, when I started teaching uh, in 2009, so I've been doing this for quite a while, um, I see no connection between high school and university in terms of who actually succeeds. Uh, students who do very, very well at high school may do very well at um, university. Students who are not so great at high school may excel unbelievably at university. So the actual difference between 95, 96, 97 does not matter in my mind. The, the, the important thing is the student and the student's commitment to the work being taken. Uh, in, in other words, I suppose, as a starting point for a first year, a 95 is a comfortable ATAR in terms of academic achievement to be able to consistently move through the study. Yes. So the follow-up question, 95 is a comfortable starting point to follow through in terms of the CDF program, I would say yes. Uh, and given that the maintained standard throughout all courses is 80%, which is a mid-range distinction, um, I believe, or at least my experience suggests that since I've been here in, in 2017, that uh, students who are, uh, who are of that 95 ATAR standard uh, tend to maintain a well over an 80 average in their courses. That's at least been my experience over the last few years. Any other questions? Oh, sorry, I didn't see the question up there. So, yes, uh, so this is the one that I always get confused on because the, um, sorry, I have to repeat the question once again. Uh, the question is the unique nature of Navy. Uh, so Army comes straight across after high school. Navy, on the other hand, Navy's already been deplo deployed for a year before they join us. You will need to speak to Defence Force Recruiting to find that side out. I really could not speak to it. The only thing that I do know is that absolutely uh, our Navy TOs have already been involved uh, potentially out to sea for a year already before they join us. Defence Force recruiting will be able to speak more to that than I'll be able to. Any other questions? Oh, sorry. I really can't see it. It's getting dark in the room. So you said that the School of Business is the smallest admin study in Canberra. Does that mean the school is more competitive or does it just mean less applications? It's a very good question. The best way to respond to that, in terms, the question was uh, the size of the school, does it make it more or less competitive to join? And I would say that over the last decade or so, our numbers into the School of Business have been quite steady. Uh, year by year, we haven't had great fluctuations. Even in the context of COVID, our numbers remained quite stable throughout. Um, and these numbers are decided more than anything else by defence in terms of funneling down a particular path. Um, so we do have a small number of students relative to other schools, but I wouldn't say that is a deliberate point of uh, competitiveness or anything like that. It's 
This is a very, very unsophisticated way of saying it. That's always the way that it's just it's shaken out that way, it's just the way it has been. Uh, and the key thing is, of course, given that this is uh, related to defence, we are teaching into defence, uh, defence plays a large role in funneling people down different paths. So at certain years, we have more engineering students arrive uh, who may join business at a later date, but uh, it depends. So I don't have a good answer, unfortunately. It's just the way that things have always been. Uh, but given that it is an ATAR of 80, it does become competitive. I, I won't, I won't uh, deny that in any sort of way. But our numbers have been quite steady, and defence plays a big role in allocating people to different schools. Thank you. Perfect. So any other questions? Sorry, it's, it is getting dim for me. I'm, in my old age, it's hard to see from where I am, and there's various things blocking my eye line. Uh, are there any other questions? Are there any questions for the TOs who can speak to the student experience better than I can? If you have any one-on-one -on -one questions you'd like to ask, I will be here at the front. Uh, if not, thank you very much for your time. Uh, and I appreciate the full room as well uh, when I was speaking. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. And if you don't already have a, uh, uh, a degree breakdown, please go to the School of Business desk in the Adams Auditorium and you'll be able to pick one up or a physical copy up. Thank you so much, everyone.